All right, let's bring in Greg Jarrett, Fox News legal analyst, to see where we're at right now. So the defense less, uh, it's always good to see you, uh, Greg. So the defense rests. Monday, the jury gets the case. So far, does, if you are Kyle Rittenhouse, does anything worry you? Well, it's folly to predict the outcome, but I think he has mounted with his defense attorneys a very strong case. And they had an advantage going into this. Uh, you know, th this has been an unmitigated disaster for prosecutors mm -hmm. as their witnesses and their evidence, Brian, have disintegrated, mm -hmm. including the key witness for the prosecution who melted under cross-examination and admitted that he advanced and aimed his weapon at the accused. So this is a very strong case of self-defense. And prosecutors have had all of this evidence, most of it exculpatory for more than a year, which invites the question, why did they charge? Right. I think the right. obvious answer is that, that they fell victim to public pressure, the woke mob and the media that drove a false narrative. So speaking of the prosecutor, here is him getting scolded by Judge Schroeder. Take a look. I'm a little bit challenged when you say, uh, is there something that I'm saying that draws the face that you're making? I Go ahead, say what you I want to say. I have to say, Your Honor, yesterday I was uh, the target of your ire for disregarding your orders. I was talking yesterday about the Constitution of the United States and how the Supreme Court has interpreted it for 50 years. You know, my, I was married to a prosecutor. One of the things that I know yeah. is that you, you know, you want. He's still the same guy, you're just doing something else. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I, I am still married right. to that okay. prosecutor, former prosecutor. You know, you need to trust the prosecutor because there's two different stories. But also, how much does just likability play into this? I mean, he just seems like a very unlikable person, in addition to having videotape evidence and other things that are, are, are problematic for his case. Well, uh, jurors take cues, both from the judge and what they see coming from the prosecution and the history of, of tongue lashings uh, of prosecutors. Boy, that was, that was right up there. And the yeah. judge was right. I mean, th this is a prosecutor who trampled on the constitutional rights of the accused, uh, the right to remain silent, sure. and the right to confront his accusers in addition to egregiously violating a pre-trial judicial order. And, you know, jurors perceive that stuff. They weren't there for the scolding, but they likely know about it. Mm. Well, and I think, Greg, the prosecutor knows that uh, he's behind because it sounds like they're going to talk to the judge today about uh, lesser charges, in, in addition to what Kyle Rittenhouse has already been charged with, lesser charges like, you know, instead of intentional homicide, reckless homicide, instead of first degree murder, second degree murder, because the, the standard uh, is lower, which would suggest he realizes, eh, you know what, unless we lower those, uh, we are really going to lose. Yeah, it's a sign of desperation, Steve. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, th th this should never have been charged with the high counts as it was. Uh, even the lower counts are dubious, but the right of self-defense still applies. Yep. And as I say, you know, there, there's a right. plethora of evidence. And the burden of proof shifts to the prosecution once you assert the affirmative defense of self-defense. They have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that this wasn't self-defense. And I think there is that, uh, in a reasonable doubt. Wendy Rittenhouse was on The Mom of Kyle, was on last night with Sean Hannity. Here's uh, what she said about what the president said about her son. I was angry. President Biden don't know my son whatsoever. And he's not a white supremacist. He's not a racist. And he did that for the votes. And I was so angry for a while at him. And what he did to my son, he defamed him. And Rob, by the way, as a candidate, he becomes president. Hey, could he, so right. could, if Rittenhouse is exonerated, is allowed to go, uh, and there's no retrial, could he turn around and, mm. uh, and sue the president for defamation? Oh, he absolutely he absolutely could, not to mention all of the news organizations, pundits and reporters 
uh, that, that slandered him with accusations of being a domestic terrorist, a racist, a white supremacist. Look, those are not protected opinion under the First Amendment. No, those are assertions of verifiable fact that can either be proved or disproved. So I think Rittenhouse, Rittenhouse if, he, if he does get acquitted here, has a pretty strong case for defamation, not just against news organizations, but Joe Biden. Right. Wouldn't it be interesting to see him on the stand defending himself in this? It's interesting the parallels between Covington and this in terms of videotape ending up exonerating potentially for, for Kyle Rittenhouse and also the way the media played into it um, and, and how the, and, 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 and the kid in Covington, he won. Yep. So, all right. They cut yeah. some type of deal. I, I mean, yeah. We did. They cut a deal, yeah. but, you know, clearly he was able to do that. Uh, Greg, uh, we wanted to ask you a little bit. Remember, it was a couple of weeks ago where the FBI said, you know what, uh, we're going to be taking a look at what's going on in school boards and essentially uh, the FBI is going to investigate. And uh, that comes on the, came on the heels of the National School Board Association apparently sending a letter to the president and the White House referring essentially to uh, parents as domestic terrorists and said maybe you could use the Patriot Act. Now, as it turns out, uh, some internal memos uh, have been released, and it turns out the school board was speaking to, uh, they, were, they were conferring about this, it looks like coordination, uh, a couple of weeks before they actually sent the letter uh, to the White House. And part of what they said was this, in the September 14th, 2021 meeting of the Organization of the State Association Executive Directors Lia Liaison Group, they were informed there had been a meeting with the White House staff that morning and that the National School Board Association was preparing to send a letter to the president. Subsequently, on September 17th, uh, the interim executive board emailed notice to the State Association Executive Directors that indicated a letter requesting federal assistance would be sent. That's a mouthful. All it really says is uh, they were <laughs> all in cahoots. Yeah, now we have documentary proof, Steve. I mean, this was a setup. You know, the White House, the Biden White House meets with the National School Board Association and says, send us a letter of outrage accusing parents of being domestic terrorists and we'll order or assign Merrick Garland to sick the FBI on parents who dare to complain about things like uh, critical race theory and mask mandates. This is Garland who is acting in a lawless way, he has no federal authority over this, this is a state matter, uh, and he is weaponizing the vast powers of the Department of Justice and the FBI to suppress uh, dissent, uh, to tell parents, you know, shut up or else. It is unconscionable, uh, but it doesn't surprise me that Merrick Garland capitulated. Right. Yeah. All right, uh, Greg, thanks so much. It's unbelievable. Uh, the department, the, the White House works with the school boards to tell the Department of Justice to investigate, and they act like it was just, uh, it was something that happened organically. I thought they weren't supposed to have politicized the Department of Justice. I have to go look at the president's remarks again. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.